conducting sphere. First question, can you have an electric field inside if I charge them? No. Okay, so the charges will only spread out on the outside uniformly because they are conducting. Now, if I have a Valkyra half generator, let's say 1000 volt, 5000 volt, and I'm going to start charging this one. Do you think the charge will stay on this one or because they are connected, they will spread all over? Very good. Spread out all over because they hate each other. They want to be as far as possible from each other. So it will be like the little girl touching the Van Graaf. What do you think about the voltage? If this has a voltage of 1000 volt, okay, so I charge them all and then I disconnect them. So all the spheres will have a voltage of 1000 volt. Like the little girl, remember the little girl touched the Van Graaf, she becomes herself an equipotential. The Van Graaf will be at 1000 volt. She will be at 1000 volt because she is insulated from the ground. So I disconnect the Van Graaf. All those spheres, that will be the first question on the one other problem all those spheres will have the same potential does that make sense i have an equipotential i'm connected to the ground my potential is zero all over okay and they are isolated from the ground so the potential will be the same okay so v1 equals v2 equals v3 i'm going to show you mathematically so it will be a nice uh, review of your engineering skills and then the question is what about the electric field so first of all um, so the potential will be the same which one will hold the most charges from your guts three very good it has more surface area we're gonna see in the coming unit that it will have a largest capacitance. Capacitance will be defined as the amount of charge it can hold per unit volt. So for one volt, how much charge you can put. So we're going to see the capacitance of a capacitor okay, will depend on the amount of charge you can hold. So for a spherical uh, geometry, there is not much you can hold here. There is a li limited amount of charge, that's why uh, Van Graaf is not dangerous. The, the charge will spread out and then they don't want any more neighbor. Okay, so the amount of charge will be very small. Okay, so of course, here you have more charge than here. What about the electric field? Remember corona discharge. Do you remember we talked about corona discharge somewhere? Somewhere under the rainbow. So, which one do you think will have the strongest electric field? One, because the curvature is smaller. Do you remember what we talked about when we talked about Corona's discharge? That's what your gut say to you. Let's see what math can tell us. Let's try to prove it mathematically. So, first of all we see that V1 will be equals to V2 equals to V3. So you're going to have charge all over here. Okay, so the amount of charge will be Q3. And here, all over there, but you see the geometry limit the amount of charge. That's why it's not dangerous. And then a little bit less um, charge here. But you're going to have a largest density here. That's a secret. Okay, you can have a largest density, surface density. Okay, so V1 equals V2 equals V3. So I'm going to uh, just focus on V1 and V3. Okay, so that means remember the equation K okay, V1 at a distance R1. So that the radius here is R1, the radius here is R3. So you have K, Q1, R1 will be equals to K, Q3, R3. Do you agree? Because V1 equals V3, okay? It's an equipotential. They all have the same potential. Do you agree with that? 
So just reviewing your uh, engineering skill, so it's not even physics here. You see you have this ratio, which means that Q3 over Q1 equals R3 over R1. Okay, it's so just geometry, which means if the size here is time is times two, so twice, twice this one, you're gonna all twice the amount of charge. Is that clear? In the coming uh, unit, we're gonna talk about the capacitance, which is the amount of charge that you can hold per unit volt. So capacitance for a sphere is uh, C will be proportional to the radius. We're going to see that in the next unit. Okay, so it, there is not much charge you can hold. So this is a capacitor. It's it's a spherical capacitor. Okay, so let's talk about the electric fields now. Okay, can you do it with me? Let's say we do a ratio. So it's uh, uh, talking to your engineering skill. So that will be for the electric field produced by one okay r1 square that will be the electric field here from three k q3 r3 square now do e1 over e3 to see what you get okay so typical thing that you will do in engineering you know finding ratio e1 over e3 you see that k is going to go bye bye. When you divide the ratio, that means you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? You divide basic math, right? If you do a divide uh, uh, a over b, so if, and then c over d, you multiply by the reciprocal. So very simple math here. So that's going to be here. R three goes here, and then R um uh, q q3 is here is that clear okay so e1 over e3 so this is really basic math will be q1 over q3 times r3 square over r1 square is that clear did i do the mistake no that's good now, Q1 over Q3 equals what? Q1 over Q3 equals R, uh, Q, uh, you write R1 over R3. So here that's going to be R1 over R3 times R3 square over R1 square. So that goes bye bye. That goes bye-bye. So conclusion, I'm going to have E1 over E3 equals R3 over R1. So which one is the largest, E1 or E3? Which one has the largest uh, radius? So one, one will be, the electric field produced by one will be the largest. So it's a cute way to show you that when you have a, the curvature is small, okay, then the electric field will be large because you have more density of charge. It will be more um, uh, squeezed together. So the density per surface area will be the largest. So that will be a very cute way to show that. Okay, so a typical what you will do in engineering, you need to find ratio. And then you can show. Is that clear? So that was one question from the homework. Conclusion, if I ask you that for test number two, conceptual equation, a conductor with the smallest curvature will accumulate the most charge per unit area. So we'll have the strongest electric field. So it will have the strongest chance to discharge. Okay? So that's why in the high tension line, sometimes you have something there on top of the pole. So you can have what it's called a corona discharge and you can smell it. Because when there is a discharge, the air becomes ionized and you get ozone. And ozone has a very special smell. 
Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to emphasize, remember that some students have uh, asked me ask me about equipotential, but to understand equipotential, you just have to imagine contour line. So, for example, if you have voltage here, okay, as a function of this is this is the x-axis, for example, that will be the y-axis, but you see it's just a projection, and here you have contour line. If so each line here will have a potential. So that will be very high potential, okay? Because if you put a one coulomb of charge, it will be pushed very strongly. And as you move down the potential, the electric field is gonna decrease. The electric field wants to bring a one coulomb of charge down the potential. How do we find the electric field? That's another question from a homework that I just added then you will have to find the largest slope. Okay, so how do we find the largest slope? That will be delta V divided by the smallest distance, that is the perpendicular distance. Okay, make sense? Um, some civil engineers, they, they understand that, but here is, I have an example, typical conceptual question, you have equipotential, and they ask you to find the electric field here. So what is the electric field is, you can think of that as a force per unit coulomb or the slope, the largest slope between two equipotentials. So how we do that? You have to take that drawing here. Okay, don't... Um, don't, don't space out, stay with me. So for example, they are asking here, so you, you will have to find the perpendicular distance. So you make a line perpendicular to here, perpendicular to that. Okay, so that will be your run. I'm gonna call that, uh, I don't know, uh, delta, delta S, okay? So you will see the electric field is the slope, the largest slope, between two equipotentials. So in that case will be six minus four. And then that distance here, I'm not sure. It looks like it's one centimeter. It's about one centimeter, but it doesn't have to be, okay? 0 0.01, that will be volt per meter. Is that clear? Okay, so it's a, in um, calculus three, we call that the grad. It's a, it's a vector because it has components. Okay. Uh, yeah, because it's supposed to be calculus based, isn't it? Other example here, you see, you can, these simulations are great. We didn't have that when uh, we were your age, but you see, this could be a very long charged wire, infinite. And when you are very close to it, you see you have the electric field here, perpendicular to that. And you could find, so the electric field here will be the force acting on one Coulomb uh, charge, right? So 344 Newton per Coulomb. Or you can think of that as the slope. Okay, uh, the slope between the equipotential. So here I can trace an equipotential. I have about 314 something. And then another one here, which is 229. So how do I find the electric field? I will find the change in potential. Okay, so 230 minus 3. 15 about divided by the distance. So the distance is about 0 0.2 meters. And you will find that you will get this. Okay, so that will be the slope. Do you understand? And as you move away, you see, the slope is gonna decrease. Okay, so that was another question, typical conceptual question. Okay, so that's it. Um, Let's go back to capacitor. Now it's the new unit. So we talk about that a lot. The definition of a capacitor, it's when you have two conductors. They are 
equipotential, so they, they have the same potential. They have the same charge, but one is negative, the other one is positive. Between those conductors, you have an electric field. They interact with each other through an electric field. And you see, it's like a spring that's being squeezed. Uh, no, the opposite. Uh, yes, squeezed together. So you see that the energy here, uh, so those those negative here positive wants to get back together. So it's it's like the electric field is trying to bring them together. So it's more like a stretch spring. Right? It wants to bring them together. So anyway, between them you have a insulator. So usually it's called a dielectric. Air can work can work too, and you have energy stored inside that electric field. So the equation for that electric field uh, uh, energy store inside the electric field is given by this equation here. You can prove it. Is that clear? And then, and then you can burn out this energy through a load, like your heart. Okay, so it's called a discharge. And how long it's going to take for that energy to be discharged depends we're going to see on the resistance. So you can discharge very quickly. So in that case, you're going to have a huge surge in current going through the heart, or it can go slowly. So it means the energy burned out uh, will take more time, right? So the current will not be that large. Okay? So this is called discharging uh, capacitor. Is that clear? So here you have your capacitor or defibrillator. You connect it with a power supply. So you're going to charge it. That will be plus here. That will be minus. That capacitor can hold the charge for a very long time. And then you place it across your heart, which is here. Now it's, a, it's going to be a conductor. And what's going to happen is going to discharge in your heart here. And you have a big surge in current. So that's how it works. And I, I had a demo, but I came straight from home and then I have to leave. So next time I will give you your, I will show you the demo. But you see capacitor here, I'm charging the capacitor. Do you see that? What's happening if I increase the area of a capacitor? More capacitance, very good. Exactly like the sphere, largest is the sphere more charges it can hold. So you increase the capacitance. You see the capacitance is here. The unit is farad. So in that case it's picofarad. If you increase the area, you increase the capacitance. You can also decrease the distance between them and you increase the charge. It's like you're increasing the motivation. So the electric field gets very excited. It's about to bring the charge together. If you increase the distance, you have less charge. So this is called the parallel plate capacitor. That's what is used in electronic. So I disconnect from the power supply and it's holding the charge. So that's your defibrillator. Okay. That will be your load, could be your heart or something else. And now you see, I have a flash. Here, all, all the energy that was locked into, into the electric field has been discharged, transferred to the load. If you decrease the resistance here, the flash will be very quick. So that's how in uh, 1930s at MIT, there was a professor here who developed high-speed photography. That was a revolution at the time. And he developed the stroboscope because he was able using a capacitor to discharge the capacitor in the plasma uh, tube, like a, like a plasma globe, right? Inside there was plasma, so all the capacitor was discharged into that plasma uh, tube, and you had a big flash in a very small amount of time. So that will 
open the door for high speed photography. So it's mean you do a flash, 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 flash. So it's stroboscope. Okay. So that's uh, one use for a capacitor. Uh, just a last thing, just to remind you what we did last time. You see that I can. Uh, so okay, I can increase the area to increase the capacitance, but I can also have a dielectric here between the plates. Remember, it's non-conducting. So the charges inside cannot move, but they can be inside you have polarization. So you see here the minus here, the, the, the electrons trying to be pushed this way. So that's why you can increase the amount of charges because of this minus. Do you understand? You increase the capacitance, you decrease the capacitance. Interestingly, as we talked about the elephant fish, the electric fish, you see the electric field here can go through the dielectric, unlike a conducting material. Conducting material cannot have an electric field inside. This one, yes, but you have an electric field from plus to minus, and you have a small electric field here from plus to minus, so they, they uh, kill each other out. So it will mean that if you have a dielectric inside an electric field, the electric field will be uh, we weaker. Okay, so we talk about that. So I show you that here. That's how these uh, uh, weird uh, looking fish, they can sense if there is a conducting uh, object in its vicinity, so it can eat it. So a lot of application. So for example, in your ignition system, the, you use your battery to, to store energy in your capacitor. And that capacitor will discharge in a coil. Okay, and that coil, um, so capacitor will give you a surge in current. A coil will give you a surge in voltage. So you charge a capacitor, the capacitor will discharge when you start your car in a coil and the coil will burp out a huge voltage and that's how you can produce a spark. Okay, you use capacitors in computers for um, memory, okay, because it can hold charge. You use capacitor, for example, uh, if um, in that train is in San Francisco, so it has kinetic energy, and then when it breaks, instead of losing that kinetic energy to heat, it's being stored into capacitor that will give back the energy to the, um, it, it will lack like a generator, right? Uh, if you're doing electronics and you play with microcontrollers like Arduino, you do use capacitor as a timing um, component, okay? So it means it will uh, help the oscillation for the oscillator here, 16 megahertz, right? So you use capacitor in a pacemaker. Pacemaker, you also use capacitor as a timing device. So capacitor can hold charge, it can hold energy and it also used as a timing device because it's discharged and then it can charge again, discharge, uh, charge again, so you can uh, uh, fix it to the right time. So you can use it as a timing device. In any, any electronics here, if you open your computer, you can have your fan and you have a lot of capacitors here that you can see. You can also use it to smooth out signal. Okay, so high high frequency, usually signal that just noise. So you put a capacitor here and all this noise will goes through the capacitor, protecting your IC here, integrated circuit. So capacitor is a big deal. Okay, we talked about, um, for those going into medical field, we talk about that. Okay, so here is the, equation the capacitance the unit is the farad which means how many charges it can hold 
per unit charge. Okay, so uh, volt for per unit volt. Okay, uh, let's take an example. So, for example, here, do, do we, I don't know, da, da, da. let's do this one quickly. So, for example, if you have a capacitance of 4 picofarad for even 9 volt battery, what's going to be the charge it will hold? So, when you have a capacitor, you have to be careful of the maximum charge. Okay, so I highly recommend to watch the video I, I placed in Canvas. If you go over the maximum voltage when you are using a capacitor, it will pop in your face. It's not very pleasant. So capacitance is uh, the coulomb per unit volt. So the unit is farad. So 4 picofarad, so that means 4 times 10 to the negative 12 equals Q over the voltage is 9 okay so it's simple equation okay so that will be 36 pico coulomb okay so that's in coulomb that will be in volt and the unit here is coulomb per volt and notation the 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 unit we say farad name after faraday Okay, question? It's easy to understand. Once you understand the concept, you know. Okay, we talk about Leyden jar. Leyden jar is the first uh, capacitor. And it was, uh, aye, 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 the first person to understand that if you place, we'll talk about that in a moment, if you place capacitor in parallel, okay, you increase the charge. Okay, so you can go to a very, very large charge. Um, again, go to my canvas and watch the video I have place for capacitors. You have what it's called ultra capacitor and they are crazy, crazy thing that you can do. Example for a demo, which is very easy to do. If you want to do like a flash, like the, the type of flash you have in a portable camera, you can have an LED, a small capacitor, a power supply, and you can see how the LED will flash when the capacitor is discharged in the LED. You can you can find that on uh, YouTube. It's very demo. Air capacitor are very cheap. Here is another demo that you can do. That was my... Uh, uh, it's like a Leyden jar, okay? So this one has to be connected to ground. You charge here, inside you have water, and you can make your spark. So you already talked about that. I'm gonna not going to go over that. So this is what is called a plate capacitor. And if you want to have enough charge, you will need like huge plates. So that will not possible, will not be possible. So what we do, we take those uh, large plates and we roll them up. In between, you have a dielectric. So I think I have a picture somewhere. Ah, I stop that. Yeah. Okay. So again, parallel plate capacitor, that would be the power supply. Okay, so there will be an electric field that develops between the plates. Okay, so the power supply has to do work. So it's doing work and all that energy from the power supply will be stored inside the electric field. And to increase the capacitance and to increase the area and to decrease the distance between the two plates, it's, it's being rolled Hold up. Okay, so that's why the, the capacitor they, they look like cylinders. Example here in uh, your laptop or, or computer, you see the keyboard are attached to a capacitor, and if you touch B here, if you touch the key, 
you decrease the distance. So if you decrease the distance, what's going to happen to the capacitance? Increase very good. So it means you're going to have a flow of charge, okay, coming in. Because say, oh yes, more more space for us. Okay, so there is an electric current, and that's then the brain or the computer or the CPU knows that you you you, have, you hit the key B. Okay, so that will be the equation. You see, what, once you understand the concept, it's, the equations make sense. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, okay, will be proportional to A. And I forgot my note. I didn't forget them, I just call them out. Did I do that? Oh, yes, I did that. It's fine. Everything is fine. Okay, so capacitance here is proportional to the area, inversely proportional to the distance. And here you have a constant here, epsilon 0, which is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay? Permittability, permittivity of vacuum. Is that clear? So it says textbook 24.1, 24.2. So make sure you do your homework. Okay, so what do you think here? How do we increase the capacitance? Very good. Do you all agree with that? Okay. So here, remember that epsilon here is just 8.85 times 10 to negative 12 times the area. The area has to be in meter squares, and the distance here has to be in meters. Uh, so if uh, here is a video, but if you open up a um, capacitor, that's what you will see. Okay, you have, you have two insulating. Uh, component here and in be to, between two conducting components you're going to have some paper okay so that's what they look like so this is called an electro uh, electrolytic 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 uh, uh, capacitor this is the most important that you have to check here you see maximum voltage so it means if you go over that voltage, you don't have to get that voltage. You can have 9 volt, 12 volt, 10 volt, but you cannot go over that. Otherwise, it will pop and it's all uh, uh, acidic inside. So you have to be very careful. In addition to that, those type of capacitors, they are polarized. So it means one has to be to the minus, the other, the other side has to be plus. Otherwise, they pop too. <laughs> And uh, this, uh, some, some of the small ones, you have ceramic, mica, mica are more expensive, they are small ones. So this one has a largest capacitance of 4700 microfarad. Okay? A lot of fun. You can make a, a coil gun if you want with enough capacitor because the capacitor can burn out a lot of energy in a small amount of time. So you can build yourself, you can have them in parallel. So if capacitors are in parallel, the capacitance will add up. So you can have a huge amount of charge, and then you can make a coil gun, right? Uh, you can hack, for example, if you hack like a disposable camera, you open it and you can get the capacitor, which is very large, 3300 microfarad. And, you know, you can have fun. Lot of things you can do. He, he had built a coil gun. Okay. But um, now I just want to show you the methodology, how to find the capacitance when you have a different geometry. For example, here I have a spherical capacitor. So you have two spheres. So this one is embedded in, in the large one. Okay, so this one is charged positively. This one is charged negatively. In between, you have air. So can we have an electric field here between the plus and the minus? 
Yes, remember? Okay, a lot of uh, it's, it's interesting for environment. For example, you see, you also have a spherical capacitor. So this is the Earth, and that will be the ion ionosphere. As I've told you, you have voltage in in the, above the Earth, right? Okay, so let me show you how to find the capacitance. So it means how much charge, okay, I can uh, I can store here. Uh, given a voltage of one volt. So it means let's find out the capacitance of such spherical capacitor. A Van Graaff generator is a spherical capacitor, except that the minus here will be far away. It will be, you know, the environment. Okay, it will be uh, the, 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 the ceiling, the wall, and the floor that are connected to ground. Okay, so let's do that. I'm not going to do for all of them. I do it for one. And it says, you see, remember, you have to do your uh, homework. You have to get the textbook. I gave you a link to a cheap, cheap uh, bookstore where you can get all your textbook. Okay, so first step. For any geometry, we're going to find the electric field between the conductor, okay? So that's going to be where the energy is stored. So it's like before, except that before we have that parallel plate, okay? So the electric field is between the plate, and that's where the, el the energy is stored. Now we have a different geometry, so this is called planar geometry. Now we have a geometry which is spherical. So the, first of all, the electric field is this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, okay? Between both of them, so between the plus and the minus, of course, I'm going to have a voltage, delta V. Okay, so this is high voltage, this is low voltage. So the electric field always show the way for one kilowatt charge, which way to go to lower the um, electric field. So how are we going to do that? So the electric field we already know. Okay, so the electric field here is, remember the electric field is going to be we can use Gauss law, okay? We can make an imaginary, imaginary uh, Gaussian surface, okay? And we can see that the electric field is poking through. That's going to be the same electric field here at a given distance r. So it's going to be k q over what r r. R square, okay? Remember, you can okay, you can say electric field times equals Q in over epsilon zero. Okay, so we have the electric field. Second, okay, second, we find the voltage. So this is a given. We're going to use the voltage. And for that, we're going to use the, what's the equation for voltage when you have the electric field? It's the work done, okay? It's an integral from A to B, remember? E, D, R, remember? By definition, that will be the definition of the voltage. It just means, we already talked about that, I'm not going to talk about it again. The electric field is the derivative, so the voltage is the integral. There is nothing special. So now, can you plug that into it? So from A, so point A here, go to B here. That will be my point B. I don't want to make my life miserable. So when I'm going to integrate, I'm not going to go this way, da, 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 da. I'm going to straight. Okay, so that way the electric field is parallel to my dr. 
So the dot, I don't have to worry about. Can you do it? It's not that hard. It's not that big uh, integration. Don't stare. Do it. Come on. Do, do, do. Please, please, please. Do, do, do. You have to integrate. E, uh, e dot D R. So I'm taking a walk from A to B. Okay. So the electric field is parallel to my little bit of path. Okay, line segment, so E, D, R, that's all there is. Okay, so delta V equals the integral from A to B. I have my electric field, so Q, R square, D, R. So what's the integral of 1 over R square? Very good, it's a negative, right? And that's going to be minus 1 over Rb plus 1 over Ra. Okay, I, I skip a step, that's fine. Okay, so we have delta V equals uh, Kq. I have... Did I do the mistake? So... So K and Q are constants you can find. Yes, exactly. One over R A minus one over R B. Okay, R B is larger, that's why it's gonna be positive. Okay, so that's delta V. Is that clear? So that will be number two. Number three. What's the definition of the capacitance? Q. Q, very good, Q over delta V. Okay, so you divide this, you, you, take, you take the reciprocal, Q divided by that. Yes? Yes? So it's going to be Q uh, divided by, and then you have a K, is it okay? I'm missing somewhere. Q, 1 over Ra minus 1 over Rb. It depends what you call A, what you call B, but I want to make sure that would be positive. When you did the interval, one of these are negative optimistic. I don't know. There is a minus here. And then I change the minus inside because the integral will be minus over R from A to B. So maybe there is a mistake in the um, in the sign, but anyway, you take the absolute sign. Okay, you want to make sure it's positive at the end. So the capacitance will be 1 over K, 1 over, so it will be the largest, 1 over Ra minus 1 over Rb. So i just show you the methodology. Uh, delta V, V, A. You're right. There, there is. Uh, you're absolutely right. I, I see why. But at the end, you're gonna get that. You're right. It should be. It should be uh, the opposite, right? But that's. That's that's why exactly that will be V B minus V A. So you have a minus here, and uh, so that will be R B minus R A. So you are right. So if I do it correctly. Is that right? Uh, minus, so it's going to be uh, minus Rb, so it's going to be Rb, yes. So Va minus, yes, that's the correct one. So Va minus V, Vb minus Va, it's going to be this. And then you flip it because you want to have a positive one. So this here will be Va minus Vb. It doesn't matter. You want to make sure that at the end it's going to be positive because the potential here will be larger than this potential there. Is that clear? So when I write it this way, that will be Va minus Vb. 
So this is VB minus VA. You are right, there is a minus here. So then I change it to VA minus VB because I want to make sure this is more positive than that one. I want to make sure that will be positive. So that will be the final answer. So would you flip the integral upside down? Because that's... No, do, do you agree with this? See, I, there was a mistake. So 1 over RB minus 1 over RA. But that will be VB, VB minus VA. But I want to be positive, so I do I multiply by minus one both sides. So here I get VA minus VB, and here I have one over RA minus one over RB. Yes? Is that clear? The idea is that at the end, this voltage here is that higher than that voltage there. Is that clear or not? Yeah. Yeah, because, because, so when you integrate 1 over r squared, that's going to be minus 1 over r. No. Are you put the two letters? Would you put them in the top of the You can do that. Oh, actually, you write. You're right. If, if, you, if you want to get rid of this minus, then you go from B to A. Yes, you're right. You can, that will be easier. You can do that. You can do B to A and KQ over R square DR. Okay? So you're right. And uh, so in that case, you get VB minus VA, but you want VA minus VB because you want that to be more positive than that. And you get this. Is that clear? Just show you the step. And now, you remember that k equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0? That's how they get that answer here. So just to show you the steps, so at the end we get this one. Any question? So in that case, you see, you want to have, this is A, and this is B. This is plus Q, and this is minus Q. So you see, DA is larger than VB. So 1 over A is larger than 1 over B. So that's how it gets positive. So let me ask you something. Can you, so we have C equals 4 pi epsilon 0 over, so we have 1 over RA minus 1 over RB. Do you agree with me? That will be the capacitance. The amount of charge it can hold uh, if you have a spherical geometry, can you can you find the limit and say what's going to happen if R B goes to infinity? So it means you take that here and you move it very 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 far away. So it means now you have a Van Graaff generator. Okay, so it means you have your sphere here, which is A. That's a Van Graaff generator. Shh. If you have a question, just let me know. And you have your charge Q. So where is your minus? Yes, very, very, the minus will be zero, the ground, right? So it will be very, 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 very far away. Okay? Now RB will be very, 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 very far away because that's going to be your ground. Yes? So can you find what's going to happen to the capacitance? What's going to happen if that B goes to infinity? So 1 over infinity is going to be 0. So what do you get? 4 pi epsilon 0 over 1 over Ra. So that's going to be 4 pi epsilon 0 
So that will be the capacitance of a van graph generator. Okay? And we're going to see it cannot hold a lot of charge. So uh, did you understand? I messed up a little bit with the integral, but the idea is that you I, I didn't mess up the integration, but just here you have to go from A to B and there is a minus that will cancel out the plus, but at the end that's what you get. Okay, so very important for environment because here you also have a spherical uh, geometry. So let's take an example. A van Graaf generator. So van Graaf generator can have a voltage of 1000 volt. Okay, let's say the size of the van Graaf is 30 centimeter. Can you find Q? Okay, so we know the equation for C. C will be how much charge it can hold for one volt. Okay, capacitance equals Q over V by definition. And we have the, capa we have the capacitance for a Van Graaff generator because the second sphere has been pushed too far away. So what you get? Yeah, Q over V is equal to, and then the equation for the spherical capacitor. Yes, so here, okay. Spherical capacitor with a van graph, that means the outside sphere is very, very far away. Right? So we have this. So we have 4 pi epsilon 0 equals Q over the voltage. That will be the capacitance for your Van Graaff generator or anything spherical. You see the capacitance only depends on the geometry. It's the geometry that will decide how much charge it can hold per unit volt. Are you doing it? Are you talking about physics over there? Someone keep talking. So it's going to be 4 pi epsilon 0 times the size is 0 0.3 equals Q over the voltage, which will be 1000. And 8.85 .8 times 10 to the negative 12, that will be your epsilon 0. So what you get? Yeah, very good. 3.3 times 10 to the negative 8 coulomb. So Q equals, so we divide by 10, you multiply by 10. So 33 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb, which is 33 nano coulomb. So isn't that interesting? Even though your Valkyrie up generator will be at the equipotential of 1000 volt, because of its geometry, the amount of charge it can hold will be very tiny, so it won't kill you. Even, even if you have huge, much, much bigger than calf, or you don't want them too big, okay, like that they used to be done for accelerating particles, but if they are even for demo, it, it won't be over like micro coulomb. So that's why you understand except if you have a pacemaker, so that could be an issue. But they are not dangerous because in those cases, it's the, it's the charges, the flow of charges, the current that kills and not the voltage. So you see, isn't that interesting? And um, so you see the voltage, uh, in the voltage here, in the demonstration I did here, you see the voltage, you're going to have 1 over R, 
because when you go from electric field to voltage you take the integral when you go from the opposite so if you go from voltage to electric field you're going to take the the derivative very good okay exactly that so uh important for those going into engineering you can find the capacitance of a different geometry so this is called a cylindrical capacitor okay so i'm not going to do the math so that's why i'm not going to do a mistake with the integral <laughs> but but it's done in your textbook and it's not hard but i can ask you do you remember um, the electric field of a charged cylinder when it's a conductor? Do you remember that? Uh, it should be in your equation sheet. Okay, so remember, this is charged positively. Okay, this is charged negatively. So it's, it's going to be the same equation that you have for a charged uh, wire. Now, if you remember, but you see the electric field here, you have a nice geometry. The electric field goes from the plus to the minus. So this is A and this is B. So you see that VA, okay, minus VB, it's going to be positive. Okay, you have high potential, low potential. It is, it is a capacitor, so it's going to store energy inside the electric field. And how did we find the electric field? We use the Gaussian, Gaussian uh, surface here. Okay, it's a surface. You see the electric field is poking through. Yes. I was wondering when we do questions, why we don't consider the top and bottom surface area. But that's a very good question because it's um, it's very long and there is no electric field this way and there is no electric field that way. It's always going this way. Like uh, here. You see, if you if you if here you have it because you have fringe effect. But if I keep building and building and building, this one is going to be all perpendicular. So if it's very big. Okay, or if you say I'm only considering here and I'm neglecting this, there is no one going this way and there is no electric field going that way. See, if I keep building it, building it, you see, it's all going this way. Okay, so the electric field, okay, between the two surfaces, you have to use Gaussian area. So it's like a paper toilet. You remember that you open and you find the area. Remember 2 pi r times L. Okay, we did that for the last test. But you find that the electric field is lambda, which is the char the linear charge density, okay, over 2 pi epsilon zero r okay so we did that with gaussian law so the first step second step will be to find delta v and guess what we should get because when you're going to integrate it, i'm not going to do it but you see you're going to integrate right you're going to go e uh, d r dot from A to B. Ln, exactly, we're going to get natural log. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, when you integrate 1 over R, you have natural log. And then third step, once you have that, you say the capacitance will be the charge over delta V. And that's how you find the capacitance. Is that clear? You can do that on your own. It's very important for your engineering skills how to integrate. Okay, and if you do that, you're gonna get this uh, equation there. You're gonna get this. So it's called nested cylinder capacitor, and you're gonna have a log, natural log here. Okay, so I let you do the computation. Yes nested so this one is inside here because to have a capacitor you need two conductors 
One is positively charged, the other one is negatively charged. Okay, so that will be a capacitor because you see in between, if I put a voltmeter across here, I'm going to find a delta V. High voltage, low voltage. Electric field always start from plus and up to minus. High voltage, low voltage. If you place a proton here, it will accelerate this way. Is that clear? Okay, uh, you can find the length. That will be the length. As lambda, lambda here will be Q over L. So make sure you do that at home of your textbook. That, that's, what, uh, that, that's what you're going to get. That will be for L. So what they did here, they replaced they replace Q by lambda L. That will be the charge per unit length. So it means you go this way. Okay, how much charge per unit length? Is that clear? So why is it a big deal? Because those um, coaxial cable, okay, they are designed in such a way to protect the signal from any any noise from the outside. But you do have a capacitance. So in a, in a engineering, they, they use, so you see here you have a dielectric. So it means instead of having air, okay, you have a dielectric between the two plates. We're going to see the equation will be the same if you have a dielectric, except that, um, that you multiply the capacitance will be enhanced by a, by a factor. Okay, but that's a lot of application here. Is that clear? So make sure you, you look at your textbook, but you see here a few equations. So that will be the parallel plate capacitor. That will be the cylindrical capacitor, so uh, coaxial cable, spherical capacitor, and then the Van Graaff. So if, if a sphere is isolated, which means you push this one very far away, then you get this equation. The unit is the farad. Any question? So make sure you get together uh, to do your homework, have a study guide, help each other out. So there is no pop quiz today. There is a pop quiz, but it's going to be due next uh, first day. I'm not going to reopen it and you have only one attempt. So for the pop quiz, I can stay a little bit after the class if you have any question. And then, uh, and then it will be due next Thursday. And there is no office hours except for me staying a little bit because I have to go back home. My husband has a lumbago, which is terrible and very painful. Just telling you about my life, you know, but even physics uh, professor can have a number go. We are not superhuman. Okay, so what do you think this is? What type of capacitor? Spherical, very good. And guess who built it for the first time? Michael Faraday. Amazing character. Didn't go to school, right? He uh, educates himself. And he built the first uh, spherical capacitor, and and he introduced for the first time the first dielectric. So if you have a dielectric, you're gonna enhance the capacitance. And uh, you see here you have two. So this one will be two plate capacitor, and you have an electric field. And you see I have trying to explain to you when you have a dielectric. You see, it's going to be polarized. So you have an electric field that goes against this one. So the, the electric field will be weakened. weakened. I mean, it will be less, less strong. But because you have a positive here, you can store more charge. OK, so what's going to happen to the capacitance? If you have a dielectric in between, the capacitance will increase by a factor called the dielectric constant. 
that dielectric constant does not have a unit because it's it's a ratio. So for vacuum, dielectric constant is k. So that's why you didn't see it in your uh, equation. And uh, uh, then you have different material here. Air, okay, uh, mica. You see, we use that for the small the small capacity small capacitor here i think they are more expensive you see capacitance here can be multiplied by four you can use water as well if you have different material you can use oil if you want okay that's why oil is used uh, to visualize electric field so you have two electrodes you can use castor oil and you have inside little seeds so the castor oil is like a dielectric. Why do we have capacitors that from how do you call that uh, cylinder as opposed to a rectangle? Cylinder cylinder happens in um, in technology. So for example, if you work with coaxial uh, oh oh no, you mean why do they have a cylinder uh, shape? Yeah. No, because the 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 yeah yeah because that way they can do this. Okay, they hold them up. So it starts with two plates, your right, and then they hold them up to increase the surface area. Then you have a dielectric that will increase the capacitance and also to make them very close to each other to increase even lower the capacitance. So good question. And you, you can have fun, like you can open the old capacitor, you open them up and you unroll them. It's really fun to do. You can make your own capacitor if you want, if you're interested, right? You can take uh, two aluminum foil. In between, you take a um, wax paper, for example, you roll them and you can find YouTube uh, tutorial to tell you what to do with it. I had a, a simulation, but I went straight home because blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's share. Okay, so let's do a simple... Uh... So you see dielectric. So what, what's going to happen is that you take your equation. Where is my equation here? For plate capacitor. And you still have epsilon zero, but you multiply by k, the dielectric constant. Okay, so if you take mica, for example, dielectric constant is seven. So that means you multiply here by seven. That means the capacitance will be multiplied by seven. Do you understand? Okay, so let's do that. That's how a keyboard works. Just laying out, laying out the, the math. Well, I'm not going to do it. So K is the dielectric constant. Okay, it has no unit. Capacitance will be equals to K uh, times times what? Times epsilon zero times the area over the distance between the plates. Okay, so that will be for a parallel plate. So this is plus Q, that will be minus Q. In between you have a voltage. plus 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 and then here you have some uh, dielectric in between and you have the electric field going from from plus to minus that's where the energy is being stored okay so that here that here you can call it also epsilon Not, not that important, but this is called a substance. You're doing the math, permittivity.
And that's the uh, free space or, or Okay, so here distance is five millimeters to begin with. That will be your area and that will be dielectric. So I'm not going to do it, okay? I'm just laying out. So K is 3.5 times epsilon zero, which is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 times the area, so 9.5 times 10 to the negative 5 over the distance, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 3. That's before you hit the key. Are you doing it over there? Or it's like a salon, like a French salon, they talk to each other. Are you doing it? You doing it? The computations. Do, 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 do. So CT, C2 equals 3.5 times the same thing. Times... Uh, what is it? 9.5 times 10 to negative 5 over 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3, whatever you get. Is that clear? Mm. The what? The, the K. The K. K is a dielectric constant. It depends what you place between the two conductors. So if you have air, that means your capacitance uh, is uh, K is just one. But if you have mica, so that means you take your same equation here, let's say this equation here, and you multiply it by seven, you multiply it by K. K does not have any unit. Is that clear? So if uh, dielectric is five, constant is five, you multiply by five. Oh. And by definition, just a notation, we call that the substance permittivity, and you have this relationship here. So if you go back to the equation, dielectric, dielectric strength, what is it? Oh, dielectric strength here, what you have here is just the break. Well, one, one is it because it can break down, can happen. So it means if the electric field is too strong, then it's going to zap between the plate. So for air, you see it happens if the electric field is over 3 million volt per meter. So it's the breakdown of the electric field. So for each material that you have between the plates, there is a limit. If you go over that, then it will break down. <clears throat> okay, so did you get that? So take 10, 10 to the negative 12 is picofarad. I don't know what's wrong with those slides here. It's not 93, it's 27. Okay, so I'm not going to go into details, but this this is something I highly recommend to if you're going into computer engineering or electronics, you can play and you can play with those equations. Okay, you see, if you have a dielectric, the electric field between the plates will get weaker, but the capacitance here is enhanced by a factor of k. So if you have a dielectric, you have c equals k times c sub zero. So I'm not going to go over that. K, OK. OK, energy stored into a capacitor, OK? It's going to be, so that will be for a plate capacitor. So one half c v square, you can Refer, I refer you. I refer you to. I think I have to charge it. I, I refer you to your um, textbook to see how how it's done. 
Oh, bah, it's okay. So, uh, so you take that equation, which is only for a plate capacitor, okay? And you see that uh, V equals ED. Do you agree with that? For a parallel plate capacitor, the voltage equals the electric field times the distance between the plates. Do you, do you remember that? So you replace V by ED. And you see that A G squared is, is the volume between the plates. So anyway, using that, you can show this equation. That will be the energy density. So what does it mean? It just means that in any electric field, no matter the geometry, energy will be stored. And that energy store can be released. So that will be true for any capacitor. And that will be the energy per unit volume. Okay? Any question? It's just an equation. And it says uh, maybe next time we'll do together 24.8 and 24.9. Okay, try to do this one. 31. Long stem. So the energy store between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor is one half the capacitance times the voltage square. The unit is in joule. So again, so that will be only for parallel plate capacitor. Okay, so you have an electric field in between your living field. So the voltage here, I don't know what's happening with the buses. It's the I saw a line last time. Why? There's more people coming to BBC all of a sudden. It's very well. Yes, minus Q. So electric field is uh, storing energies to store house for energy. So let's decide on that. So capacitor has twice the capacitance and the same working voltage. So you take a capacitance, the capacitor, you have that energy. So here you have capacitance is multiplied by two. So what's going to happen to the energy? It will be multiplied by two. Very good. So if you multiply capacitance by two, the energy is multiplied by two. Um, twice capacitor with twice the working voltage. So if you multiply the voltage by two, what's going to happen to the energy? Multiply by four. Half the capacitance, so it means capacitance is divided by two, and the voltage is multiplied by two. So that means the energy should not be this is energy, okay? Should not be confused with electric field. Maybe I should put, uh, I don't know, I should put U instead. So this is my energy. So the energy, what's going to happen to it? It's going to be divided by 2 and multiplied by 4. So the energy will be multiplied by 2. So which one will work? B. Good. Do you understand? If C is divided by 2 and V is multiplied by 2, so that means V squared is multiplied by 4, so 4 divided by 2 is multiplied by 2. So the answer is B. So now that equation here is the energy density. So this is only true for a parallel plate capacitor. That will be 
true for any electric field. Any electric field around us, that will be the amount of energy per unit volume. So it's a density. It's called energy density. So we're going to see that an electric field or a magnetic field is a way to store energy. Okay, so that will be the capacitor symbol. Okay, pa to parallel plate capacitor, that's a battery symbol. Switch. Okay, so let's do that by playing with the simulation. Okay, I'm going to take uh, multiple capacitor. Why is that so small? I would like to... Okay, so I'm going to take capacitor in, in parallel. Let's say three in parallel. So let me ask you something. What's going to happen to if I increase the capacitance here? What's going to happen if I increase the capacitance here? What's going to happen to the charge? Do I get less charge, more charge, and the same? More charge. But look what's happening. So I, they increase the capacitance by decreasing the distance. Are, are the other one um, disturbed? Are they disturbed? No, they stay with the same charge. They are independent from each other. So that's the principle that we're going to see when we get to next unit. When the components are in parallel, they ignore each other. Okay, they do their own business. They don't care. So this one, I can also increase the capacitance. You're going to have more charge. Increase the capacitance, even more charge. What do you think the voltage across is? It's going to be the same because you remember voltage is like height. So here you go from 1.5 to, imagine this is zero. So it means each Coulomb of charge has an energy of 1.5 Joule relative to the negative electrode. So here you have 1.5 and here you're going to have 1.5 and here you're going to have 1.5. Let's say they have the same capacitance and they have the same voltage. So what does it mean? What else is going to be the same? Same voltage, same capacitance. Very good, same charge, same charge. So what does it mean? If you have Q1 and Q2 and Q3, everything happens. I have one single capacitor with three times the charge, okay? So that means I can replace the three of them by one single capacitor that can hold three times the charge. If the capacitance are not the same, doesn't matter. It means that the total charge will be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Does that make sense? That means when you have Capacitors in parallel, you can add the capacitance. Everything happens like you have one single capacitance with a capacitance of C1 plus C2 plus C3. And that was a secret when they built those Leyden jars. I don't know if you remember with Humphrey Davy. He took all those capacitors, connect them in parallel. So he had a huge, huge capacitance. A huge charge so huge spark when it was discharging you see how it works and a very good question series is another is the opposite series so i'll show you that but uh, let's let's try to memorize uh, what's the capacitance here uh, three times 10 to the negative 13 right, and the store charge. So I can replace that by a single one. And so th what was it? Three, three plus three? I, I cannot go higher than that, but you can replace by one single one. 
with three times the capacitance and three times the charge and the same voltage. Is that clear? So in series, it doesn't go well. So that's why we don't use series, we use parallel. So in series, what's going to happen is that, what's happening here? What's happening? Can, can you, is this one independent of that one? No. So it means if I increase, you see, I can try to increase the capacitance, but the charge will be the same all over. Okay. So if I decrease the capacitance of one, it's like all of them are losing, losing charges. So if you have capacitor in series, it's going to decrease the total capacitance. And uh, if I if I measure the voltage here, what do you think you're going to have? So the total height is 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 Excellent. You're going to have 0 0.5. So it depends, of course, on the capacitance, right? So here I have 0 0.5. So let's see, I increase this one. So now I have 0 0.6. Here it's going to be a different voltage, 0 0.2. And here it's going to be a different one. But all together, it would be 0 0.5. So you can play with it. Having capacitor in series decreases the total capacitance. You will do that if you don't have the right capacitor for your circuit. So you have them in series to decrease it. Now, uh, the other thing, uh, I just forgot. Okay, why, why they cannot be independent from each other? Because you see, there is a, um, it, 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 there is an equilibrium happening. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, six minus, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six plus, otherwise they will flow between each other until you have this equilibrium. Okay? And then you have a fern, you have, okay? So it can get more complicated, but this one is the most tricky to understand. Once you have a capacitance and you disconnect it, and then very weird things can happen if you show the dielectric. But that's for those going into computer engineering, electronics. You don't have to worry about that.